So the fish are done spawning. Now what? Post-spawn can be a difficult time to figure them out because the fish are moving and doing different things, but it can also be one of the most rewarding times of the year. And some of the biggest fish of the year come when they start getting juiced after spawn. So today we're gonna break down what the fish do when they're done spawning. We're gonna talk about our five favorite techniques to catch post-spawn fish so that you guys can catch more fish this spring. So if you're ready, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku, being joined by my buddy Jeffrey the King. We are The Hookup Tackle USA. Today, we are breaking down post-spawn fish and our favorite techniques that we use to catch them. So, you know, this is the time of the year, right? Where, you know, the fish have moved up to spawn and you know when they're in the shallows and you can sight fish them and they're you know super aggressive everybody kind of becomes a hero right they're they're easy to catch it's fun it's this great time and all of a sudden you know they they're done and it seems like everybody kind of goes through this lull and it's like okay it's not easy anymore right but post spawn and understanding what these fish are doing it's really one of my favorite times of the year to fish because you know, you're actually catching fish that want to eat stuff now. And it's the time of the year that really you can get some of the most aggressive strikes and reactions out of them because they're really focused again on feeding. It's, it's less about tricking them and less about feeding them now. So typically what happens now, again, remember, every part of the country is gonna be different, right? So some of you guys are fishing, you know, rivers and tides and, you know, shallower ponds and deeper lakes, right? So all of this information is going to be usable. You're just going to have to adjust it based on your bodies of water, right? So typically when the fish move into spawn in early spring, they're looking for that shallow water that's getting a lot of sunlight that warms quickly. When the fish finish spawning, especially those females, they're done, they will move out to the first, what we call like rest areas. Okay, so these are areas that are away from the shallows, away from the craziness of the shallows, right? All these, all these men, right? All these bluegills and carp and fishermen and boats and just chaos, right? So they want to get out of that. So they are going to just back down to the first place they can, uh, that they can get some refuge and some peace. Now, that may be, you know, the bottom of a ditch. That may be move off out of a cove and go chill on a point. Uh, that may be, you know, they're following the ditch out and there's this nice little reef that they can just kind of chill on. It could be a big tree where they just kind of move out to deep water and suspend. It could just be deep water even. So sometimes just going and chilling in some deep water and suspending there is enough for those fish. So they are going to move, they are going to rest up and recover. And then once they're kind of recovered, and they've kind of got back into the groove like, okay, all right, now I'm starving, let me go eat. Generally, those fish will go one of two directions. They will either move back into the shallows and follow kind of the shad spawn in, feed on you know the bluegill spawn, feed on that shallow stuff while it's warm and lots of stuff happening, or they will back out deep and find deeper structure. And again, feed on some of those deeper schools of bait, crawdads, you know, stuff that's hanging on a reef or rock pile, so on and so forth. So to really attack your post-spawn game, I think it's important that you have techniques and approaches that can fish for the resting fish. So your fish are suspending and just kind of chilling on the in-between. 
You gotta have some approaches for the shallow fish, so when they're done resting and they've moved up shallow and they're gonna be aggressive again, and you gotta have some approaches for those deeper fish that have rested up and then they've backed off and they're gonna chill on more structure and feed out deep. So, let's get into it. You ready, Jeff? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, for me, typically after spawn, and this is gonna be really for probably the next 45 to 60 days after they spawn, I believe a lot of those bigger females will just suspend. They'll use things in the water that are easy for them to suspend around deep water. Big trees, right? So if you guys have any kind of creek channels, ditches, anything that have big cottonwood trees or any type of trees, they will suspend in those trees. It could be off a flat break, off a point, they'll just kind of suspend out there. The best way to catch those fish, in my opinion, is with top water. And the bait I almost always start with is a Tekel kick knocker. Now these are available in a kick knocker and a kick knocker pup size. You can do smaller or large. I usually start with the large size and then I'll downsize if I have to. The reason I like this bait is it's a pretty good size bait. It can throw a really long distance. It weighs three quarters of an ounce so I can cast it really far, but it has a really loud knock in it. Right, so you have that loud knock, you do have those glass beads in the head to give that kind of high pitch, but this is a bait that the fish can hear from a long ways away. I can work it slow, right? I can work it fast. So I can judge based on how the fish's aggressiveness is, I can work it different ways. I can fish it really slow over key areas, and then if I happen to see some fish shallow, you know, on a shad spawn or something, blow something up, I can wind it in really fast, throw it in there and work it more aggressive. So there's a lot of different things I can do with this. Other baits that could be good that will do similar things would be like the evergreen shower blows, head and super spook, so on and so forth, right? But the key is having that loud knock, that loud sound, because this is really targeting those fish that are suspended in deeper water that are just gonna wait for this to kind of come over their head. They know it's there and they can literally just move up, eat it, and then move back down. And a fish will move 15, 20, even 30 feet vertically to get a topwater bait, right? So this is without question my starting point almost every time. And as far as colors go for me, white is you know usually my starting point out here some type of you know shad pattern you just a natural shad and then i usually have some form of clear okay and the clear for me is for when they get really picky on small bakes remember this is the time of the year where the shad are going to start spawning and typically those are full-size shad so they're used to seeing bigger shad this is the time of the year where bluegills and brim, that kind of stuff, are gonna go up and start spawning. Those are bigger, full-size brim. But it's also the time of the year where you're gonna to start to see a lot of fry, bass fry, carp fry, some shad fry, and those are gonna be super tiny. So sometimes the fish get really keyed in and picky on size. So if I feel or I know they're eating bigger stuff, I go with you know more of a solid color. If I see them eating little fry and tiny little stuff, then I go to a clear and it just kind of breaks down the size of it. It just shrinks it down. They can't really get a full sense of the profile as they're looking through it. Now, staying in top water for a quick second, the other bait that is super critical for me this time of the year is a Lucky Craft Gunfish. Now this is a bait that pretty much stays on now through fall for me. And the reason is the Gunfish is a bait that I can work very quickly, I can cover a lot of water, and this is gonna be a bait that I throw when the fish are really aggressively chasing bait. So, you know, there are times when they're super juiced and super aggressive, it doesn't matter what top water you throw at them, right? Just get it near them, twitch it, as long as it looks like a shad, they're gonna eat it. But for me, typically the kick knocker is more of a searching tool. It's more of a tool that's going to call the fish to them where they're not necessarily actively, aggressively chasing. And the gunfish is a tool when they're really juiced, they're chasing bait, they're you know wolf packed up and they're swirling around bait, that's when I go to the gunfish. Now typically for me, the 115 size uh, is the size that I throw just because I can make long casts. The gunfish is gonna be more of almost kind of a wakey type of emotion versus that really loud knock of the kick knocker. Again, same thing, I'll go with like a white, you know, again, I'm a sucker for white, chrome, bone, anything like that when I want something full size. 
and I'll drop down to clear when I'm unsure that they're eating full-size stuff. If I see them feeding on really, really tiny things and it just becomes super, super difficult to get them to commit to something, that's when I'll drop down to the Gunfish 95. Or if you guys are fishing smaller ponds, right, or really still water or something like that, the 95 might be a better option for you. Just because it's a little more finesse, it's a little more subtle, but that's an excellent choice also this time of the year. All right, next in my arsenal is a bait that I feel can do both the suspended fish well as well as the fish that are committing again to moving up shallow and they're kind of on their way into the shallows. So haven't quite made it super shallow, not really super, you know, in the bushes and in the trees and smacking stuff, but they're either kind of in that resting zone or on their way shallow. And for me, that's a jerk bait. Now, a lot of you guys also live in shallower bodies of water where there's a lot of grass and they can use that grass to kind of lay up and then they'll move to like edges to feed. Jerkbait is money in those places as well. Now, these are the two jerkbaits that basically now will stay on for me through the rest of the summer. These are a little more aggressive moving baits than what I would use, say, you know, late winter, early spring when the water's really cold and we're using the jerkbait, you know, very slow and methodical to get those fish that aren't moving well. These are baits that we can move much quicker much more aggressive, they're gonna be louder, and they're going to trigger strikes a little bit better uh, this time of the year in the post-spawn than say something like an Edovision 110 or something that we may have been throwing the last few months. Now, there's no right or wrong to this. If you guys are jacking them on you know, a specific bait, then just keep at it. You know what I mean? So they let the fish tell you what they want. But this is the Mega Bass Ito Shiner. Uh, this is my go-to, basically post-spawn through early fall. I like it because it's a little bit heavier. It has three weight transfer balls, so it casts really a far distance. It's got a much more aggressive side-to-side -side movement than say like a 110 does. It's got a louder sound, right? So it's got kind of everything working for it, similar to the top water, just this is going to be more subsurface. Sometimes you get a little bit of breeze, they don't really see that top water great, and that's when going to a jerk bait could be money. The other bait that I love at this time of the year is the X80 Trick Darter. And this is a bait that, you know, a lot of you guys, especially in the mid part of the country, catch them on your round. But this is a bait that really comes into its own during the post spawn in early summer. Now these baits are designed to suspend in pretty cold water, right? So as the water warms up, they're gonna actually turn into slow sinking baits, okay? Which is amazing for this size bait. So this is the bait that I go to when I need a smaller profile. When they're eating the bigger stuff, I'll stay with the Shiner. Now the X80 Trick Darter is one that I can just, I can twitch, 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 and wind in very little pause. So this guy, I want this guy just to kind of be darting and moving and then bouncing up and down and then, you know, just constantly be on the move. So we're triggering those aggressive feeding fish. What's nice about this bait kind of slowly sinking on the suspend is it lets me keep it in the lane that I want to keep that bait in. If it was true suspending or even slow float, it would be coming up a little bit higher in the column because I'm working it much more aggressively than I was working a jerk bait back in say February or March. So give this a shot. If they are feeding on small bass, you know, tiny little bluegills, that kind of stuff, the X80 Trick Darter is amazing. It's got great shad profiles as well. Typically color selection, I'm kind of doing the same thing. The whites are great. Uh, this is the time of the year that I will usually switch to more of a full body offering. Something that's got a little more shine, something that's got a little bit more just body to it, right? Because it's less now about tricking them and more about making the right angle, putting the bait where the fish are actively feeding. So this is the time of year we can get buy with some of these more aggressive colors. But the jerk bait's an amazing way to go between the top water and the jerk bait. Dude, you guys, you guys are gonna jack in the spring. Next for me are techniques that I'm going to utilize now when those fish have committed to being shallow, right? So they've gone out, they've rested, now they have to decide, okay, well, where are we gonna eat? Are we gonna go shallow and eat or are we gonna go deep and eat? So a lot of those fish will move back shallow to take advantage of the shad spawn, take advantage of this bluegill spawn, just take advantage of all that life in the shallows and they'll feed up. And there's a lot of different things we can do here. And again, you're gonna have to 
use your own knowledge of your fisheries. If you've got a lot of slop, a lot of weeds, you know, a lot of brush, it might be something like a frog. Like this is a time of year where you could absolutely just destroy them on a frog. Maybe it's a square bill for you, right? So there's tons of options that can be good, but this is generally the starting point for me. And then I let the fish tell me what to do. And for me, when I know those fish have moved up in the shallows, it's all about a swim bait for me. Now, for me, it's a four to five inch bait is, is usually key for me. Now, I am focusing on those fish that are keyed in on the shad spawn, on the bluegill beds, right? They're used to seeing these larger four and five inch different fish swimming around that they're feeding on. So I wanna go to this larger size over say something like a little two inch or three inch swim bait, right? I wanna take advantage of them feeding big. Now, these are generally the starting points for me. This is the Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper and this is a Mega Bass Spark Shad. Now this is kind of like my one-two punch in the spring. And again, I've got whites here just because that's a color that we smoke them on out here, but use, you know, use your history on your places. If they don't eat white great, then maybe go to more of a natural color, right? Like a bad shad in this or a sexy shad, you know, like a real or, you know, neon pepper in this guy, right? You can, you can adjust your colors based on what your fish are feeding on. Now, the reason why this is a great one, two punch, the skinny dipper is an excellent bait to burn. And we've talked about this before, this is the bait that I will choose when I wanna cover a ton of water and I want this bait to go really, really fast. This is a bait that I can rig on a four-aught or a five-aught hook. I can throw it out. As soon as it hits the water, I'm gonna let it sink just a second and then I'm literally just going to burn it back in. I want this to go just under the surface. So this is the surface of the water. I want this bait literally right here going as fast as it can Right, just keep my rod tip down and just wind, 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 wind. And these little grooves and this little back area will create a little bit of a pocket underneath the water and it will hold it right under the water. This is something that's going to get aggressive strikes out of fish when they are feeding, right? So they've run through a school of shad and now they're not sure where the shad are and they're kind of looking around, they're figuring it out and all of a sudden there's this one shad swimming for its life, they're gonna go for it, right? So aggressive fish, skinny dipper when they're not aggressively chasing and they are kind of set up waiting for things to come to them. So maybe they're set up on some trees, some bushes, kind of, you know, a dock, uh, grass line, something like that. That's when I will go to the spark shad. So the spark shad is a great bait for moving very slow. Okay, so this is one that I can throw and just wind and it's going to have that nice little head wobble while that tail is kicking. The other reason why I love the spark shad is because if I rig it properly on a six aught or eight aught weighted beast hook, then I can throw this guy next to a tree and I could get it right in the strike zone and I can kill it. And when I kill it, this thing is going to continue to swim, but it's going to also fall horizontally a lot like a Senko would, but just with more of a bait fish type motion, I can get it down there in that tree. I can pull it up and over the tree, come off a branch, right back down a tree and I can keep that bait in that zone where those bass are just kind of set up on, right? They're not super aggressive, they're not roaming around. They're really kind of set up in this area and I can pick it apart with this guy but still give them that shad profile, that bluegill profile. It absolutely gets smoked. Now, if you guys are fishing in places where they're feeding more on like gizzard shad, uh, or carp or some of the, you know, maybe just really big threadfin shad, uh, herring, that kind of stuff, then I would probably replace the spark shad with the magdraft freestyle, right? So this is basically an either or for me, and it just comes down to size. You know, what size do I want this thing to be? If I feel like they need something with a little more body, I just go to the magdraft freestyle, and it's the same exact idea, guys. I rig it on that dot beast hook, uh, you could do it with the flashy swimmer with the blade or without not really a huge deal here because I'm fishing it really shallow um, So same concept, right? It's going to be a bait that I can kill Let it go down in that tree and then I can kind of come up and over a branch a lot of times right as it comes over that branch and moves That's a trigger for the bass and they'll they'll smoke it. So Go for one of these when you want it to be slow 
can go for the skinny dipper when you want it to be fast, and you can just pick apart that shallow zone. When you get to an area where there's no more bushes or nothing shallow, then you put it down, pick up the top water, the jerk bait, fire out there, cover some of that deeper water. When you get back into an area where there's isolated pockets, put the top water jerk bait down, go back to the swim bait. It's just a great approach, you know, kind of a one, two, three approach that you should be able to just duplicate and cover a lot of water until you find those active fish that are wolf packed up and schooled up. All right, now this is a little bonus thing that I'm throwing in here for you guys, okay? So let's call this bait or technique three and a half, 3.5, sound mm. good, Jeff? So this is something that I've been playing with a lot over the last couple of years, and I can't say enough great things about this thing. Post-spawn through like mid to late summer when the fish are feeding on tiny, tiny little bait, right? And this is the Genius Project Plus Blade, okay? Now, all this thing is, is just basically a, a piece of wire with some blades on it. Okay, and it's designed to attach to your baits. Now, one of the hardest times to catch fish is when they're feeding on little bass fry, when they're feeding on little shad fry, and that stuff is, you know, an inch, inch and a half big. It's really difficult to match the hatch and duplicate this tiny, tiny little stuff with normal bass gear. Right? So that's when I can utilize this guy right here. And very simply, this just clips on the front of whatever you're going to throw it on, right? So here's a spinner bait, for instance, right? So it, without this, this is the profile of your bait. It's pretty big, right? So remember, if they're feeding on little inch and a half stuff, right, this is way too big. But all of a sudden, you put this little plus plate on there right? Now you have all these little inch and a half baits that are going through the water and now it looks just like a little pod or a little school of those little fry going through. This is an amazing thing when you're in the shallows and you see all that fry moving around around the trees, around the docks, that kind of stuff and the fish are picky, you can smoke them on this. Now it doesn't have to go on a spinner bait. It was designed for that but something that Griff has been doing and he's been absolutely crushing them so I of course had to steal the idea and utilize it, because that's what I do. I'm an mm. idea poacher. Yes, right, you Jeff? are. Yep. Is just to attach it to a little swim bait head, okay? So just a little jig head with a swim bait, but you put that plus blade on there, and then all of a sudden it's the same idea. It's gonna look like a little pod of bait fish swimming through the water, and the fish just see that little pod, and it just looks so natural to them, but then you've given them a target, right? So they think this is the little bait, but you've given them a big enough target for them to come up and eat. So if you guys are struggling to catch those fish that are feeding on that tiny stuff, give this a shot. It's one of those rare, like kind of alteration gimmick kind of add on things that we actually utilize all the time. So give it a shot, Genius Project plus blade. All right, so we've covered the resting fish. We've covered those fish that have gone shallow. Now let's talk about a couple techniques that we utilize for those fish that have decided, okay, I'm gonna go feed down here in this deeper stuff. Now, once they move out on a structure, whether it's a reef, a rock pile, a point, whatever, there's lots of different ways that you can attack them and catch them, right? And as we go through the summer, the bait selection may change and adjust based on how juiced the fish are, right? What they're feeding on, all these things. But for me, Post-spawn, it's pretty simple. If those fish decide to move deep, we catch them on a drop shot and we catch them on a crankbait, right? So let's talk about drop shot for a minute. So drop shot is probably the easiest way to get those post-spawn fish that have moved out onto deeper structure to go. And it's very simple. With a drop shot, you can fish it very slow, right? You can move it really, really slow to match their aggressiveness. You can fish it relatively fast. You can hop it. You can drag it. You can just do so many different things with it. And the bait is elevated off the bottom. So it's constantly kind of moving around in the fish's face and in the zone. Fish just love a drop shot in the spring. So if I'm fishing largemouth, almost always I go to a robo worm. Okay, it's, it's simple, it's effective. This is the time of the year where I generally stay in more of the clearish to 
brighter clear color. So Morning Dawn, Margarita Mutilator, Red Crawler, some of those transparent colors, pinks, purples, reds, is really what those fish are going to respond to the most. Now, if you guys are fishing dirtier water, then of course just go with more of a solid bodied color. But these transparent colors, the, the color itself, the base color, so like this morning dawn, so it's like this pink, right? That pink will start disappearing as it goes deeper and deeper in the water and it just turns more and more transparent, more translucent. I generally will stay in a shorter worm this time of the year. So the four and a half inch, either in the straight tail or the fat is usually my go-to. If I feel that the fish are really aggressive, then this is also the time of the year that I will pull out the curly tail on them and get something that just has a little bit more motion. But very simple, usually, you know, 10 to 12 inch liter, robo worm, I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. Yeah, pretty much anywhere you are in the country, they're gonna eat this thing. Now, if I'm fishing smallmouth, right, then generally, I mean, they will certainly eat the robo worm, they'll certainly eat all the normal stuff, but it's really hard to beat the three inch hazard on shad on a drop shot. So, you know, short little leader, you know, I'll shorten it up to maybe, you know, six, eight inches, maybe even shorter, depending on what they want. And I'm just gonna drop swim it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rig it on a nose hook. I'm gonna drag this thing around. And instead of it being a worm that's kind of, you know, doing this kind of, you know, wormy action, right? It's going, that was the technical thing, right? Jeff's shaking his head. He's embarrassed for me. That swim bait is just gonna, just kind of swim along the bottom. So, you know, most of the time, if you guys are around smallmouth, they're feeding on gobies. They're feeding on, you know, things that are closer to the bottom uh, versus actively out there chasing threadvin. And it's really hard to beat the Hazardong Shad on a drop shot. Just straight drag and just let that bait just really slowly kind of swim around. They're gonna smoke it for you guys. All right, and finally, for me, when those fish move out onto rockier areas specifically, so points, reefs, you know, places where they're kind of set up on structure in that 15, 20 foot zone, my favorite way to get them is with a crankbait. I just feel, you know, Jeff and I have these conversations all the time talking about big fish and there are just certain baits that catch big fish more than other baits, right? And that's one of the reasons why I love post-spawn fishing because topwater baits crush big fish. Crankbaits crush big fish. Like these things that we're throwing, the swim bait, the jerk bait, like all these stuff, this is what big fish eat, right? So anytime I can get away with throwing a, you know, deep diving crankbait or a mid diving crankbait, I am all about it. And this is a great time of the year to do it. So for me, I kind of have a three prong approach here. So I'm going to break it down. So almost always my starting point is this guy. This is the OSP Blitz Max DR. This is my favorite crankbait. I like this crankbait because it's small enough to where it works pretty much everywhere and it works for both the green ones and the brown ones, right? So you guys are fishing smallmouth, they smoke it. You're fishing largemouth, they smoke it. But it's big enough and heavy enough, still five eighths of an ounce, it throws like a dream. It's gonna get down there and really tackle, you know, that 12 to 15 foot zone, right? On light line, you could even get it down a little bit deeper if you want it. It has a really subtle knock to it. So it has some sound, but it's not overly intrusive. It's just enough sound to where as this thing is moving side to side, it's giving off a little vibration, a little noise, it's letting them know it's there, but it bounces through rocks and cover so well. And at the end of the day, like as with any of this stuff, they just eat this bait. It's available in a bunch of colors, shad profiles, bluegill profiles, just depending on what it is that they're feeding on, I just kind of match it from there. Typically for me, it's a 10 to 14 pound test on this guy. I'll go 14 pound if I'm really grinding rocks. I'll go down to 12 or 10 if I need to maximize the depth. But definitely, this is one that has to be in your guys' arsenal. OSP makes amazing crankbaits, right? Uh, but the Blitz Max DR for me is just kind of the sweet spot of the lineup. Love this bait, you guys will too, especially this time of the year. Now, if I feel that they need something a little quieter, right? They're still not super juiced. They're still a little more kind of laid up, right? That's when I'll go to this guy. This is the Mega Bass Deep X 200 LBO, okay? And this is a great one post-spawn early summer. The reason why I love this bait, and actually, 
Ryan Buttermore from Mega Bass was the one that made me a believer in this after it came out and absolutely smoked me on it. This is a easy bait to cast. It cast like a bullet. It has this LBO weight transfer system in it. So it is a, basically there's a tube with magnet here, bunch of, you know, oscillating bearings. So when you cast, you can hear it shoots like a bullet, right? So the thing throws forever, even in the wind. And then as soon as you start retrieving, it's gonna snap back in place, right? And then it's in place, so it ain't moving. So you don't have any sound, right? So you just have this beautifully performing bait. Looks very natural, like a minnow, like a bait fish. This is a great one, again, when they're, they don't want a lot of chaos. I'm not really looking to grind this into the rocks to beat this on the bottom this is one i'm just looking to kind of get down in the zone and just have it kind of swimming around natural and they eat it so if i want to be grinding rocks banging around making a little bit of commotion i go with the osp if i want it to be a little more subtle a little more natural i'll go with the mega bass deep x 200. now let's say they're laid up a little bit deeper they're really set up in that like 18 to 20 foot zone and i really want to make some commotion that's when I go to this guy. So this is the Strike King 8XD. Now, this is an amazing crankbait. I can't get rid of this bait because they just, they never stop eating a Strike King 8XD. Let me pull this out. I know a lot of you guys are familiar with this bait, but a lot of you guys too, you know, I know you're JDM junkies like me. You want all this fancy, great stuff, but you can't deny the catchability of this thing. This thing just flat out catches them. So it's a much bigger profile than the OSP or the Mega Bass. It's got a much wider lip. You see how wide that lip is? So what this guy will do so well is that wider lip is going to cause it to have a much wider wobble, right? So as this is pushing through the water, it's gotta move that whole bill, right? Whereas these first two, much thinner, so it's gonna be a tighter movement to it. This guy is going to just grind the shit out of you. I mean, it literally is just side to side, moving down there really loud, really wide grinds, right? But it's not too big of a bait or too heavy a bait to where you can't tell what it's doing. You have the right setup for these things. You can literally feel it bouncing on the rock, Big rock, sand, little rock, right? It's just an incredibly effective bait for fishing that deeper water. This is also an amazing bait for catching suspended fish. So going back to the beginning, we were talking about using topwater and jerk baits when the fish are suspended over the tops of those trees. This is another excellent option for that if you're brave enough to throw it around some of those deeper trees. I would recommend bumping up your line 16 to 20 pound. I usually throw 20 pound fluoro on it. It'll still get down there, you know, 12 feet, 14 feet, and you can bang it around some of those tops of those branches, kind of pull it up and over, and the fish will absolutely smoke it. So if they're not willing to come up to the top water, then you can bring this down to them and give them something noisy that's banging around in an easy target down there in the tree. So what between those three crankbaits, you are going to figure something out. You're gonna smoke them. That's basically the approach. My starting point, my finesse point, and my let's just get that shit down there and grind the shit out of it point, right? So all great options depending on where your fish are set up. I know you're gonna smoke them on those. All right, guys, that is a wrap for my favorite five and a half uh, techniques for post-spawn fishing. Hopefully that was useful to you. I'd love to hear, uh, you know, what's working for you guys. If you guys have different techniques uh, that you are utilizing during post spawn, please share it because I want this to be a community where everybody can learn from each other. Uh, so please drop it down below in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you have questions on any of these products or how we're approaching it, leave me a question in the comments as well. We will definitely get to it. Jeff will leave links to the products if you want to check any of them out closer. Until next time, guys, enjoy post-spawn. Enjoy this time of the year. Enjoy being warm. Hallelujah, Jeff. Jackets are gone. Flip-flops. Hell yeah. So enjoy the beautiful weather, the great times on the water. Good luck to you guys. If you need anything, holler. Until next time, peace.